morning, everyone, and those that are still coming in and those that are watching on demand. Episode number 84 of uh, Q for Teams, Champions Using Teams Effectively. Glad you're here. As always, come off mute or go on the chat if you have if you came here with a burning question that you knew could only be answered here. Uh, feel free to do so. Otherwise, I did put a poll in the chat. Um, and uh, I think, what was it? Uh, now I'm having trouble finding it. Oh, um, SharePoint list versus Excel or Power Automate and Teams. So if you see that poll, hopefully in the chat, you can make your vote. Or got a question, we'll take that too. Buddy, I see a hand up. What's going on, David? Hey, good morning, Ricardo. Good morning, Stacy. Morning. Hey, this is just a quick question. I'm sure I could research it, but I think the five minutes that I started today, I didn't find anything. When I hide a chat conversation, whether it be um, like this chat or if it be with a person, I can't seem to find a way to find those anymore, like to say unhide. They're just like gone. So, There's no like option for me to. Yeah, on. so they're they're hidden, but they're there. And so I think the, the main way you find them is through a good search, right? So if, for instance, I hit this NDI testing or I think that's because it's pinned. I don't want to mess with that one. Um, well, yeah, let's mess with that one. I'll let me unpin it. And uh, if I were to hide this, all right, it's gone. With something like NDI, I would expect that to come up um, in my uh, search. And I think that's the one there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's it there. So, I mean, it's it's a search thing. There's not, I don't think, there's not like a uh, all hidden chats kind of uh, pain or anything to kind of see what you've hidden. Okay, that makes sense. I was thinking of it as like when you look for, when you have teams and you hide a teams channel. Oh. Can, it, there's a little thing that says show all your hidden teams. And I was right. like, where's yeah. my show all my hidden messages? But gotcha. No, that's cool. That's good to, to know. To, to me, it's like it's almost because, you know, this is a, this is simply just a recent chats list. We have our pinned and we have our recent. And so even if you did nothing, technically it disappears, you know, if enough things replace it and it kind of goes down. And I feel like hide is really more like, you know, it's like take take this out of the list, you know, and if it was a yeah, if you're taking it out of the recent list, if you really wanted to keep it, you would pin it. And uh, but at least what I always try to tell folks is at least it's not delete, you know, which there is a delete chat, I think, coming. Um, if I'm remembering right, so at least you're not deleting it, but you are kind of hiding it from your view, which I think is a good best practice because, you know, there's no reason for this to be full of all kind of chats that you're not. That you're no longer, um, you know, using or anything. So I do recommend and I do try to hide my chats to keep my list clean, but finding it and bringing it back might be challenging depending on uh you know how how well you can search for it cool thanks guys yep and uh looks does my did my poll have an error is that what um seeing okay uh let me check here uh yeah I don't think anybody, well, I see five responses, so it did work a little bit. So I'm not sure what the error, I see an error in the chat. I'm not sure where that's coming from, but I did see five responses, okay. Um, and I did see something else in the chat here. Uh, if I scroll up a bit about the avatars in Teams and when they'll come to GCC. So they're not even in commercial yet. And not even fully in our internal builds yet. I, I don't, I don't want to promise, but I, I feel like it was like a Q2 kind of a thing next year for for GA. 
Um, and of course, that would Im that implies commercial could potentially also be GCC. But it, you know, even for worldwide, I thought I saw, you know, several months, couple couple three months from now. So it's not too close. Um, so hopefully that helps. So I don't have a specific answer for GCC, but avatars and and for those that <clears throat> maybe not aware with what he's asking about there. Uh, you may have seen some ads and stuff about basically moving, you know, avatars, uh, this this whole metaverse thing. It's, you you'd be represented by an avatar, and uh, you could use that in your team's meetings and have all these fancy animations and whatnot. Customize it, try to make it look like you, all that good stuff. So that's a little little ways off. I know we uh, there are inner circles testing it here internally. Um, I see an avatar pop up every now and then in a meeting, but uh, we got a ways for it to uh, hit hit everyone else. Yeah. So hopefully that helps. Um, when you do see it, well, I, I guess it could show up any kind of ways, but today, I mean, it, it's an app you'd kind of find in your app list. And I think it may be called av Mesh Avatars or something like that. But again, we're we're months away from that, so I, I wouldn't start like doing your daily search to see if it's popped up yet. <laughs> that'll that'll be a long search. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, ability of co-organizers to pre-set up break room breakout rooms. Um, Stacy, do you know about that one? I think they actually have to have the breakout co-manager role. Um, and remember, only one person can manage the breakout rooms at a time. That was kind of a, a tricky thing that caught us before. Um, let me double check here. So I know that this is in development. Um, it says Microsoft Teams support for co-organizer to manage manage breakout rooms. Co-organizers can create, manage, and move between breakout rooms like the meeting organizers. Um, I, I know someone else probably answered or asked this question, but I, I want to just explain my experience is that I have recently realized that if someone is listed as a co-organizer, you cannot assign them to a breakout room and they cannot choose a breakout room to go into. So mm. you have to list them as a breakout room manager um, oh, wow. or, or demote them to a presenter. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but 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 that co-organizer thing is coming, but it's it's only in development. It says it's supposed to be uh, preview in December and general available in January. Yes, and this is tagged as GCC getting that in January um, in the road on the roadmap. So we can be tracking that one and let you know when we see it show up in our own tenants. There's a message center notification this morning says uh, early March for that feature. For that feature, oh, okay. So the roadmap, roadmap and the message center are out of sync. We'll have to see if they're doing a GCC specific launch for that. It says for the government clouds will begin rolling out in early March, expects to complete roll up by mid March. Okay. Then I will be just came, out, just came out today. Okay. Well, hopefully they're in the process of updating the roadmap. And if not, I'm going to give them a comment right now to encourage that. <laughs> That's the nice way of saying it. <laughs> Thanks, Ricardo. <laughs> I got my smiley face on. <laughs> <laughs> and we do we do advocate for you all in terms of uh, those roadmaps and the message centers and all of those those different signals being as up to date and timely as possible. So. Yeah, Hopefully. Ricardo knows it's a pet peeve of mine when they're out of sync. <laughs> a big pet peeve. <laughs> yeah. So, let's see what we got here. Um, okay, and I see that someone's typing. 
Let me check the poll one more time because it looks like the interest is in um, the Power Automate. Um, so yeah, while we while you're continuing to think of questions, I can kind of muse a bit on Power Automate. And and I guess the one the first thing I'd say for all of us really is, um, you know, without being a Power Automate master, I mean, some of the basic functionality of Power Automate can be very um, valuable, you know, bring a lot of value with a very little amount of uh, effort. And uh, I think that's probably my main, uh, that was the main reason I kind of brought it up. And I'll give just a quick example here. Um, so for those uh, maybe unfamiliar, Power Automate is one of the many apps in your Microsoft 365. It is essentially a, call it a, per, for the sake of this conversation, call it a personal workflow tool. Uh, we could get into it, you know, more at, at an enterprise level, but, um, you know, I want to make a personal workflow. If this thing happens, then do this other thing, right? And um, and you can see even when you come in, it, it kind of tries to make that easy for you. The the classic one that I use is um, that I think provides value for Teams users is getting some data, and then when that data is received, pushing it to the channel of your team. So essentially, you've got a workflow talking to your team via the a channel post, and that could be for any number of simple things like uh, someone updates a SharePoint list, uh, someone updates a Excel file. You know, they do any kind of simple action. The one I like a lot is uh, someone updates a um, form, and um, so. I already have one created, but that probably doesn't help you. It'd be better to, to start from scratch. Um, an automated cloud flow. And you can see that they make suggestions and that th this one is so popular. It's right there at the top, really. But even if we look at a few of these, you know, when an item's created in SharePoint uh, or modified, uh, when a file is created in OneDrive for Business, when a task is assigned to me, these are all, if these things happen, then do something else right and the, and the something else will be the, the next step that we do uh, but in this case um let's call this um you know you one two three and we'll let's use the one they suggest here when a response is submitted to a microsoft form and um we'll hit create and when you when you do get lucky enough to find a, a there are templates here and this may be the place to search because there are tons. I don't know if it's hundreds. It might be in the hundreds, hundreds of uh, pre-built templates. And it is likely whatever you're trying to do is already pre-built. And essentially, then you just fill in the details. In this case, this one essentially just uh, gets us started. When a new response is submitted to which form, I go ahead and I uh, pick which form I want. <laughs> And um, and then so that's the action. And then what do I want to do once that action occurs? That's the next step. And it, it doesn't have to just be one action. It could be multiple actions. It could be complex, but we're going to try to keep it simple. All we want to do is post a message with that data uh, into Teams. Or, or in this case, in this very simple case, we just want to post a message to Teams to say a form's been submitted. So you can see here they put some, uh, you know, different ones are right in front of you. Let's go. Let me see all the actions that I can do against uh, teams. And so there are many. So these are all the types of things that Power Automate is ready to do um, with teams. Lots of different stuff. But the one I want is just to um, post a message in a chatter channel. OK, I typically post as the flow, but I think I could I could post as Ricardo or, or, or PVA, but Flowbot and then where do I want to post it? And and Power Automate, you know, already knows all of my the teams and channels that I'm associated with. I'm, I'm signed in. I'm authenticated here, so it knows all about me. So I want to post in a channel. Um, OK, which channel, you know, in which team? 
Let's go with the uh, 2018 safety audit team, which channel? Let's go with, again, it, it knows all about all of these things. I don't have to type them in. Let's go with test one, two, three, and then I can just do a message like, um, the form has been submitted. And I know, it, I wish it could be more complicated, but this one's actually done. I mean, for, for what we're trying to do, right? I hit save, I could, you know, check my stuff, I could test it, I could do all those things, but this thing is, as it says, is ready to go. Um, and so when a form gets submitted here, and hopefully I can find that form, um, it will uh, it will happen. So let's uh, see here, uh, go to forms, Let's see if I can find this. Are you happy form? Uh, there we go. Uh, this form is read only and it can't be edited. Uh, but I think I can do this. I can say yes. I'm, I mean, I'm in preview mode, hitting submit. Response to submit it. Let's see if any magic happens on this side. And uh, da -da -da. See what was that? Now I always forget where I um. Oh no! And I wasn't watching. I was answering <laughs> Sean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let me see. Deliveries. It was Look. test one two three was the channel. Test one two three, and was it in twenty eighteen safety audit? Mm -hmm. they, they, so where is test one two three? What did I do there? Test two three. That's you might have used that a few times. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what happens when you try to use old old stuff here. Let me. Well, now we get to see how easy it is to edit an existing <laughs> uh, flow. So let me choose something that makes more sense. Um, let's let's stay there and let's just do the general channel. Again, we save. And meanwhile. Um, Let's go back to the main page for this workflow because we can also see how things are going there. So this kind of shows, you know, I created it, what it, what connections it's using, but the key thing for us is down here, the run history. And you can see that it did try. So it, it saw that that form got submitted and it tried to do something, but it did fail. I'm assuming because that channel didn't exist. If I was interested in as to why I could click in and uh, basically, you know, really troubleshoot it. Um, it's telling me a bunch of techie stuff in here. Um, and in this case, the bot's not a part of the conversation roster. I think that's a fancy way of saying that that channel didn't exist. So let so I think I've updated it. And let's try a form again. Uh, go back to Teams. Power Automate posted a new message. Form has been submitted. So that's, oops, we're gonna go. That's what a typical Power Automate message using the bot would look like. Obviously I could have made this say anything. And if we were to take this further, I could have made this say things specific to what got submitted. Um, that, that'd kind of be a longer conversation in terms of having the flow uh, look at the form data, look at the responses, and then I could craft a sentence that had, you know, different aspects of the submission in it. Um, and when you start getting that fancy, then there's almost not even a need to even go look at, because this, with this, my action is now, okay, let me go see what got submitted. If I put enough data from the form, I really don't even have to go look at the form. It's all there. And again, then imagine the power that this is a this is a you know a note that everybody on the team can see, and start to you know conversate about if if needed. So uh, we use this approach um, when when we're helping customers uh, sign up. When I say me or we, uh, me I'm not the CSAM team that I work with, when we're signing customers up for workshops, we give them a form that they can um, you know submit, and then that comes to our CSAM team via a, a channel where we can all see how the submissions are going. In addition, not only is it going to our channel, it's also putting that info in a spreadsheet 
elsewhere so that we have pivot tables that let us know how many people are in each each uh, thing. So we could continue to add complexity to this very simple workflow. Um, just, we just don't have that kind of time, but hopefully that little example lets you see. I mean, I did that in a few minutes. It would have been shorter if I had picked the right channel. Um, but hopefully you can see some value in that, that um, that could be useful depending on what the trigger is that uh, your team is interested in, whether it's a form or a spreadsheet or something like that. But Power Automate can talk to teams very easily. So that was like a really quick 10,000 foot view uh, of that. I see in the chat we had some issues using the Flowbot. It has to be turned on by the admin. Yes. Um, do you need make sure all the everything's enabled? Um, so cool. And of course, that didn't have to be a team's post. That could have been an email to you. You know, that's when we talk about personal workflows. Hey, when this happens, email me or email the team, you know, or all of those things. Email me, put it to teams and update this spreadsheet. Could do all could do as much as your creativity um, would allow. So we'll quick, really quick refresher there. Mm -hmm. In the chat, we're talking about all the different places to uh, keep up to date about what's coming uh, in uh, in um, Microsoft 365. So that's good stuff. Just for the sake of this audience being more of a government audience, I'll just paste this one for the sake of the video. Um, but definitely a good one, the public sector blog. Um, a lot of key, a lot of our key releases do. That is one of the motions that comes along with a lot of key releases is making sure there's somebody ready to, to post a blog post about it. So this is definitely a good one to keep up with. We have more time. I would. Another thing I'm using, an automation tool I'm using, is RSS feeds from sites like this, and having those RSS feeds go to a channel in our team, such that when something new comes to a page like this, we're getting a channel, a team's channel message um, via the RSS feed to let us know it's there. So, just trying to automate things, keep us from having to always have to remember to go look at something. Um, and then we, we mentioned message center earlier, as you could imagine, you could probably automate some something to make your message center post go to teams as well. I, I've got some customers going, having their message center posts go to planner so that the admins mm -hmm. have a task to do once those, uh, posts come out. So plenty of automation opportunities without having to be an automation engineer. That stuff. Um, as we said last week, actually, no, we got, I was going to say, don't be quiet because it's your last chance before the holidays, but we do have one more Friday coming up, uh, before we kind of take our two week hiatus. So yeah, I'll be here next week. Yep. I, I should be too. I might be mentally checked out when I'm here, but I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There may or may not be some eggnog. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Other, uh, go ahead, Chase. Yeah, I was just going to answer out loud, although I did put it in the chat. There's um, many, many, many different sources that uh, Microsoft posts, that partners post, that even members of my team are working on to post about features and when they're released and after they're being tested and what we have to say about those um, features and how they work. So I know that the sources can get quite overwhelming. I do want to call out that we have two that we consider to be authoritative. That is the Microsoft Roadmap that we talked about earlier. It's the um, source that Amanda posted the breakout rooms and co-organizers little snippet from. That is one of the authoritative sources. The other one is your admin message center. 
So those are the two authoritative should always be as close to accurate as anything else, which is one of the reasons why earlier in the session, I said I have a little pet peeve when they're out of sync because they are supposed to be um, driving the, the same message about these features and their releases. Um, I am going to give a feedback into the process on that one that we found out of sync today, having to do with the breakouts and the co-organizers and whether we should expect it in January or March. Um, fortunately, that's not a huge window and, and should be a very quick thing for us to remedy as far as the documentation goes. But sometimes things can get a little out of sync in a bigger window. And so we want to always keep those as closely aligned as possible. The other sources, the ones that my team is putting together, the public sector blog, those should always be referencing back to the roadmap or your message center posts or be written around not just Teams, but all of the Microsoft 365 apps and services. That's going to be the focus of the public sector blog. Um, there was a, I provided a link in one of my chats back to Sean about the team's roadmap weekly update. That one was born of us keeping track of those message center posts and the roadmap posts, and then going out and actually testing it in a GCC environment and having that come out. Um, that's been a great resource, but just know that it's being fed by those message center posts and the roadmap, just as you're going and checking those sources too, as are we. So um, hopefully you guys were aware of those sources. If you aren't, I would definitely keep the roadmap, your message center, if you are an admin and have access to that, the team's roadmap weekly update, and the public sector blog as the core four. And hopefully all of those complement each other instead of <laughs> disagree. <laughs> More often than not, anyway. Awesome. All right. We're just about at time here. Um, so if that was helpful, glad everybody could join. Don't forget, if you're a coffee lover, I drink coffee at 8 a.m. on Tuesdays and 9 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays and and talk about teams. <laughs> so you can learn about teams while drinking coffee if you're interested in that. And those are on uh, online as well. AK.MS slash coffee for teams. 8 a.m. Tuesday. Yep. 9 p.m. Thursday. Of course, Eastern. 11 p.m. 11 a.m. Friday. Yep. Yep. You are one dedicated man. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm just, I'm just a bit geek is all that is. Yeah, that Thursday. 9 p.m. Thursday. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say. It's decaf, decaf on Thursdays. <laughs> You're not going to blame me for keeping you up all night. So decaf <laughs> coffee on decaf edition on Thursday nights. You sure. will get your wheels turning, though. You may have ideas swirling all night, but it won't feed you to <laughs> caffeine. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, have a great rest of your Friday and a great weekend, and we'll see you back here next week. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the blog for more content.